Parents of TikTok, what is the creepiest thing your kid has ever said to you? Three-year-old child. When prompted uh, a question like, where do you live? Expecting like, what hometown do you live in? What is your address? Just to kind of gauge what their knowledge is of their home. Hey, where do you live? I live here now, but I used to live in the woods. Well, our house is kind of in the woods. No, I used to live in the woods and I would come out of the trees. I want to go back to live in the trees. My three-year-old at the time predicted I was pregnant. I didn't know I was at the time, but I was. We were sitting in the living room watching TV one night and he turned to me and said, Mommy, you're gonna hold my brother. Daddy, you're gonna hold my sister. Four days later, I found out I was pregnant. Honestly, I have so many that I don't even know where to start. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one. So one morning, um, pretty early in the morning too, before work, I'm getting ready and I'm putting on my makeup and my two and a half year old Evan just happened to be awake at that time and he was talking to me. I was looking in the mirror and answering him and he started to ask me, um, why is he crying? I'm like, who? And he said, him, he's crying. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, him under the bed. He looked under the bed and went, aw. And then he walked out of the room. At that point, I wasn't scared because I realized he was talking about the dog. A few seconds after my son left the room, in bursting through the door comes the dog. I did actually end up checking under the bed to see if there was anything and I didn't see anything. So I'm definitely not a parent and this was quite a few years ago, but my little brother at the time was probably like two, three, maybe four. And we're all sitting in the living room, my whole family. And he like, we were watching a show and it had something to do with reincarnation. And he like turned around and he was just like very matter of fact was like, well, you know, I had my past life, me and my dad, we lived on a farm and we died in a fire and uh, God put me here and now I live with you guys. It was kind of strange and we all just kind of looked at him and started asking him questions. He's like, yeah, this was my dad's name. We lived in the state, we lived on a farm. And then like, I never really thought too much about it. Years later, looked it up and there was like a young child and a father who had died in a farm in the same year he was born. And it was just really coincidental and weird. And the fact that he remembered it all. When my daughter was three years old, she was coloring at the coffee table and her brother was sitting on the couch watching TV. She turned to him and said, the cat will eat your soul, Jeremy, and then went right back to coloring. So this wasn't my child. This was actually my nephew. Way back in the day, whenever he was like, oh God, I don't even know, like maybe three. I was babysitting him. I was at my sister's house and he went into her room and my sister had a box just filled with makeup and homie came out of that room screaming and crying and of course i asked him like what's wrong what happened and he started pointing to the box and telling me there's blood in the box there's blood in the box so i go over there and i look and i'm like there's nothing wrong with this box so i bring the box out and he is running from me he does not want anything to do with this damn box he then tells me there's something in the closet of course i check the closet there's nothing there he's freaking the hell out talking about how there's blood on the floor there's blood on the ceiling there's blood everywhere in this room I'm imagining some Freddy Krueger type shit happening. And we leave. We get the hell out of that house. Because Aunt Sushi don't play that shit. No, no. No, no, we ain't dying today. I have so many of these, but there's one I want to share for the message that it carries. My son and I are not Christians. Um, we have never been Christians. Um, I actually was raised Baptist, but I never really felt a connection with it. Um, and then around the time that my son was born, my son and I had an experience that cemented us in the religion that we're currently in. It was a supernatural experience. It was very apparent where our path will lay. Um, my daughter, however, is a Christian. Um, I know that sounds weird, but she is. And she is because her religion chose her. We were driving down the road one day. She was about two and a half, three years old, and we passed a car crash. Um, it didn't look that bad. There was one car with some front end damage, and there was a police car, a fire truck, and an ambulance. Um, as we drive by, she looks out the window and she goes, mommy, mommy, look, 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 it's an angel. I look over. I don't see anything. I said, baby, I don't see anything. I just see the car and the fire truck and the police car and the ambulance. And she said, no, mommy, he's right there. He's so big and he's so beautiful. And oh, mommy, he's waving at me. And she waves back out the window. And then she gets so sad. She just gets so sad. And she said, oh, mommy, it's cause that guy died. And the angel came to take him home. Now, my daughter would not have heard any of this anywhere because my family, my mother's family, who she's grown up with, has never been really religious. My husband's never been really religious. 
nobody talks about that stuff. We talk about me and my son's religion. Not Christianity at all. So I, she would never have overheard that. But she was convinced. I didn't say anything against it. I said, oh, okay, wow, he waved at you. That's cool. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. That's so sad. And we went home. Later that night, I happened to be watching the news. And that crash was a fatality. I will never tell somebody that their religion does not exist. I will never hate somebody for their choice of religion. There are multiple religions out there. They claim you at some point. Those are the religions you're destined to be in. I will never tell somebody their religion doesn't exist. Me and my daughter's experiences are proof of that. So I was a preschool teacher for almost a year and I met a lot of different kids. But this one particular kid, he was a little different from the rest. His parents would always try to give us tips on how to deal with him because, um, you know, they were worried. But he would say stuff like, I'm not from this planet. Um, I'm just using this body until I get to a certain age. And the kids would laugh at him. Even the teachers didn't believe him. They would laugh about it in the break room and shit. But me, I knew he was on to something. So I'll be talking to him all day. I'll be leaving my class to go talk to him. But the kid wouldn't tell me nothing, man. He always used to say I wasn't worthy. And he's, he'd be like, when, when it happens, you're going to be here. You're going to be stuck. So I'm like, I'm going to be stuck here having to box your clan? You're like, it's not a clan. Well, eventually I was just like, man, if I give you extra fruit snack here and there, man, will you, will you take me with you guys? Come on, man. Don't even. Okay, I'm in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. Well, I'm going to give you all part two. Here we go. So basically, I got a write-up because the kid went home and told his mom that I was pressing him about his origins and his, um, what is it, like his, his clan, his, his colony or whatever they call it. And I was like, are you connected to E.T.? Is the E.T. shit real? Like, like, do they really look like that? Do your mama, like your, your real mama really look like that? And so his mom came up to me like after a while and said, you need to stop asking my son these questions. We don't need to embrace the fact that he's thinking and feeling this way and shit like that. And I was like, I'm going to find out the truth because I know I know alien species are real. I know that all this stuff real and your son coming close to it, cuz. And then, you know, second write up came and I was like, you look, I need this 1650. So I ain't going I'm going to leave the kid alone. But I give him the eye every now and then. I'm like, you better tell me when some shit going down. But um, that's the end of the story, really. So the other day, my four-year-old is jumping up and down all around the house. I finally asked her to stop, and she's like, why am I going to bother the people that live underneath us? And I'm like, um, no, nobody lives underneath us. And she was like, yeah, they do. And I'm like, okay, so up until this last year, she, well, we've lived in an apartment. So I'm like, okay, maybe she thinks people live underneath us. So I explained to her that in a house, it's just dirt underneath, there's nobody under there. She was like, no, I know there's people under there. And I'm like, okay, play along. I was like, how do you know people are under us? And she was like, because I know they're there. And I was like, well, why would they want to live in the dirt? Because there's no house down there. And she was like, well, they can't leave because our house is protecting them. And I'm like, what do you mean our house is protecting them? And she was like, I don't know. They just can't go. They said that our house protects them. They're safe down there. They're okay. Okay. Okay, so my daughter, when she was two... I woke up to her cutting my hair. And when I asked her why she was cutting mommy's hair, she said, because mommy, your hair's gonna go by. And it was really weird. Fast forward a year or two later, she starts having these vivid dreams where mommy gets sick and my eyes get sunken in and my hair starts to fall out and I'm really sad. And then she, by the time she's seven years old, she's having the same dream again, that I have to get medicine in a tube in my chest, all my hair's out, I'm really sick. And she was really scared that something bad was going to happen. Mind you, she'd never seen anyone with cancer or even knew what that was. And then we finally watched this movie about a mother that gets cancer and she had a total breakdown because she's like, mom, that's you. That's how you look in my dreams. So I finally went into my doctor and I was like, hey, can I just get checked? Turns out y'all, I do have tumors. I have masses that have to get um, removed. And had my daughter not caught it early enough, they would have become very cancerous. This one would not be my kid. This would be some random child in, it was a Sears, uh, some sort of department store. Anyway, we'll just say Sears for the sake of the story. Anyway, so this little girl runs up to me and gives me a great big hug. And she says, Daddy, I missed you. And there's a mom and a dad. And they're both looking at me and looking at each other, looking at the kid. 
And the mom says, honey, that's your daddy. She says, no, he was my daddy before, in my last life, before you were my mommy, he was my daddy. And he says, then I'm like, uh, uh, the fuck? And she goes, okay, daddy, I gotta go now. I love you, bye. And I'm like, bye, kid. That memory still bothers me. <laughs> I have so many of these, um, but this one is by far the creepiest one. So when my son was about three years old, I was changing his diaper um, in my bedroom the one day. And he told me, he was like, mom, there's a man with black eyes standing behind you. And I was just like, okay. It's like, I look over my shoulder and of course nothing is there. And I'm just like, jokingly, I was just like, well, there better not be a man with black eyes standing behind me or else I'm going to be performing an exorcism up in here. Said it as a joke. He's three. He's not going to know what an exorcism is. And he just says, he's just like, mom. He's screaming at you. He's screaming at you. My husband and my daughter were driving through a cemetery, which one of my uncles is buried in. At this time, I had not taken my daughter to the cemetery. Neither do I have pictures of my uncle in my house. It's just painful to have them. At that time, they were passing by, and my daughter looks at my husband and says, My uncle is right there. And my husband says, Yeah, which we don't know how she knew he was buried there. And she's like, yeah, he's standing right there. And she was pointing towards the direction of his grave. And my husband goes, what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, he's standing right there. One of the things of my uncle, he used to have orange red hair. And my husband goes, oh, yeah, what color is his hair? And my daughter goes, red. And after I talked to her, she described them to a T. And she claims she sees other people too, not just him. So I don't know. It would have to be when my three-year-old decided that he was in love with the graveyard. Every day, mommy, mommy, take me to the graveyard. So I would. I'd take him over there. And he would, like, pick up trash, do little cute things. I was like, oh, well, that's sweet. Because we only live, like, a mile away. But he started getting really obsessed with it and telling me he needed to go see his friends at the graveyard. And I was like, Bubby, what friends? And he said, you know, the up people. I said, what up people? He was like... You know, the people who are gray and they're up. I was like, do they have feet? And he was like, yeah, but they don't walk. They slide on the air. And I was like, oh, well, what else do they do? He said, oh, nothing. They just slide around and they whisper to me. They come visit me when you're asleep sometimes, too. They're my friends. Okay, so I have custody of my niece and I'm in the process of adopting her. And so... um She's with me a lot. I have currently two dogs and two cats, but there is a cat I used to have adopted a long time ago. His name was Bebo. Um, after I lost him, I realized that he was more of like an emotional sport cat for me. I miss him a lot. Anyway, I mention that a lot sometimes, and she likes to tell me every single time, don't worry, you'll get to see him in heaven soon. So I've asked her a few times, what does that mean, soon? She's like, oh, don't worry. You'll just get to see him in heaven soon. 